Hello, and thanks for watching. This video is about wing supping, using your wing with a stand-up paddleboard. This won't be a complete how to wing sup video. Instead, we're gonna focus on getting upwind and staying upwind. This is a common problem in wind sports, especially for people who are just starting out in the sport. It's easy to get pushed by the wind, end up downwind of your starting point, and then have trouble getting back. In this video, we'll talk about things to do before you get in the water. We'll talk about how to get up and get going. And we'll also share some tips about wing supping without a center fin. So why do we care about winging with a sup? If you go on a wing manufacturer's website, you're generally not going to see a bunch of sexy pictures of people using wings with paddle boards. It's all about foiling, which makes sense because foiling is exciting and fun. We're going to talk about wing supping for three reasons. First, if you're going to learn how to wing foil, you'll probably spend at least a little bit of time on a sup or on a big wide windsurfing board. And you might as well enjoy that and learn as much as you can. Second, this equipment is expensive, right? You might not have $2,000 US or more to plop down on a wing and a foil and a board, but maybe you already have a sup or a nice wide windsurfing board and you're willing to drop a few hundred dollars on a wing. You can still get out on the water, have fun with your wing, and learn some things that will be useful if you do start foiling someday. And finally, if you just want to cruise around on your sup with your wing going shh, and you don't care about foiling, good for you. Go do that. Have fun. And hopefully this video will help. Before we go any further, keep in mind that I am just some random dude on the internet. Anything that I tell you or show you could be completely wrong. There are a few things to think about and do before you get on the water for the first time. Let's talk about your board. The board that I'm using in this video is a 12 foot 6 inch starboard inflatable touring windsup. It's made for both paddling and windsurfing, so it has a rear fin and a removable center fin. When you're wing supping, it's ideal to use a board with a center fin or center board. You can wing sup without one of those, but the center fin makes it much easier to get upwind and stay upwind. If your board does not have a center fin, take a look at the Supwinder from Slingshot and the Drift Stopper from Duotone and consider adding one of those to your board. Let's talk about our friend the paddle. If you have any way of strapping a paddle to your board, it can be a good idea to bring one with you, especially on your first wing supping adventures. This way, if you start to get blown downwind, you can paddle back to your starting point. If it's windy or there's a lot of wave action, you might find that it's difficult to paddle standing up while you're towing the wing behind you. It might be easier to stay on your knees and paddle that way. Sneaker sailing means practicing with your wing on land, on your feet, before you get in the water. This is a great thing to do if you have never used a wing before. I made a video about this called Surf Wing, Sup Wing, Foil Wing Essential Skills. And it's a great idea to watch that video and then spend at least 15 minutes, maybe even 20 or 30 minutes, practicing like this on your feet, on land, before you head out on the water for the first time. This will help you develop some muscle memory and get an idea of how the wing works so that the wing feels more natural in your hands and you don't have to think about it as much once you get out on the water. It's always important to consider the place that you launch from. And you might know this already, but it bears repeating. Make sure that if you do get blown downwind, you'll end up being pushed back to shore, back towards a safe area. Now let's talk about how to get up on your board and get going. We're going to look at three different ways to do this. First, there's what I call a sup start, which some people call appalling. Second, there's the foil start. And third, there's my personal favorite, the beach start. When you're able to get on your board and get going smoothly and efficiently, it's easier to get upwind and stay upwind. A sup start works especially well if you already know how to stand up paddle. 
you'll have your board facing perpendicular to the wind with the wind coming across one side of the board or the other. Carefully and smoothly using the proper technique, you'll position your wing right side up on the downwind side of the board. Stand up on your board as if you are getting ready to paddle. Lift the wing up by the leash. Control the wing from the leading edge and get the board pointing slightly upwind. Get some forward movement going. Bring the wing up over your head. Power up and go. I just mentioned controlling the wing with the leading edge. And this is something that I discussed in my essential skills video that I mentioned earlier. This lets you immediately control your wing and your board as soon as you pick the wing up. Steering slightly upwind and getting a little forward movement going right away can help you avoid the very common problem of getting blown downwind before you even get the wing up over your head. This is also a good time to mention the importance of checking your leash and the attachment point where the leash attaches to the wing. Always check the leash and the attachment point before you inflate your wing. Make sure that there isn't any damage or wear and that the leash is securely attached to the wing. We can use the, the leash as an uphaul line, but its main job is to keep you from losing your wing. A foil start is basically the same technique that you'll use if you're on a foil board. If you have any intention of learning how to wing foil, it's a good idea to practice this. You might also find that a foil start is easier than the sup start in strong winds or in choppy waves. When doing a foil start with your sup, you can use any of the various techniques that people use to get on their feet and get going with a foil board. Again, notice how I control the wing from the leading edge to steer and get some forward movement going before I bring the wing over my head and stand up. Then there's the beach start. If you windsurf, this might look pretty familiar. I'm standing in shallow water. I'm gonna put my back foot on the board. I'm gonna power up the wing and then use the lift from the wing to help pull me up on the board as I step my front foot up into position. When we beach start with a windsurfing sail, we use the mast to steer the board while we're standing in the water getting ready to step up on the board, like Ryan demonstrates here. We can't do that with a wing, so to beach start with a wing, it's best if you start off standing close to the middle of the board, not back by the tail. Once you have your back foot on the board, get the board right against your front leg. Then you can steer the board with your back foot using your front leg as a pivot point. Get the wing flying above your head, look up wind, wait for a nice gust, then look at the point on the board where you want to place your front foot. As much as possible, use the lift of the wing to pull you up on the board and whoosh, you're off. Of course, the beach start only works when you're in shallow water. So you'll want to practice the sup start or the foil start and know how to do at least one of those for when you're in deeper water. Let's talk about a common mistake that people make at this point, which is letting the wing become an umbrella. I frequently see people do this when they first stand up on their board. Notice how I'm looking straight at the wing and trying to pull the wing in close to my body. I'm sheeting in hard with my back hand, pulling hard with that back hand. The bottom of the wing is parallel to my body. And more importantly, I'm pulling the wing flat against the wind. The wing is no longer going to behave like a wing. It is now going to behave like an umbrella. It's pulling my board sideways and dragging me downwind. Notice what happens when I relax my back hand and bring my front hand and the front of the wing out in front of my head. I'm positioning the wing diagonally across the board. I only need to pull in a little bit with the back hand to create power and get some forward movement going. It's different if you're going fast on a foil board or even super fast on a sup, but most of the time you'll want the wing positioned diagonally across the board the way I have it here. 
especially when you first get up and get going. As I mentioned earlier, having a center board or center fin on your board makes wing supping much easier. If you're going to do it without one, here are a few tips. First, everything that we've talked about so far in this video will be even more important if you don't have a center fin. So if you skipped ahead to this part of the video, go back and watch the whole thing. Second, it's helpful to stand with your feet as far back toward the tail of the board as you can. When you only have that one fin at the tail of the board, or even if you have multiple fins at the tail end of the board, like a thruster or a quad fin setup, it helps to have your weight back over those fins. This also moves what we call the center of lateral resistance closer to the fin or fins at the tail of the board. This helps keep the board from slipping downwind. Also try moving your front foot toward the windward rail or edge of the board. This tilts the windward rail down and helps drive the board upwind, almost like using the whole board as a fin. You might even try moving your back foot towards the windward rail and see how that feels. Finally, speed is your friend. The faster that you move through the water, the more effective the fins become. And if you're only using that one tail fin, or even if your board has multiple fins at the tail, forward speed through the water will help those fins do their job. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to our channel, and share the video with your friends. Also, please check out my website, scottmillercoaching.com. I pay for my windsurfing addiction by working as a time management coach. If you want to manage your time more effectively so that you can spend more time doing things you enjoy, like wing supping or wing foiling, I would love to help you find more time in your life to do the things that you love.